My name is Conrad Wallace and I'm an assistant professor at UBC in the Microsystems and Nanotechnology Research Group. Many people are familiar with inkjet for making photographs and images, but uh, many people don't know that inkjet is a very versatile technology that can be used to fabricate electronic uh, devices. This machine here allows us to print various types of polymers, nanocomposites, uh, anything that's fluidic really we can deposit it. The way it works is that there is actually a little uh, piezoelectric actuator inside the nozzles and uh, when we send an electrical pulse it spits out uh, individual droplets of the fluid and so we can pattern any type of uh, sensor device and electronic device. So this particular system we just acquired through a, a grant from the, the Government of Canada and it's actually the first uh, system of its kind in Canada and uh, at UBC so we definitely have a unique capability here uh, to do some really novel and interesting research. Hi, my name is Gabriel. I'm a grad student in the Micro Nano Group. Hi, my name is Nilu and I'm working on this inkjet system. Um, here's the software for the inkjet uh, system. We have some parameters like the voltage and pulse length and stroke delay that we have to tweak them around so that we get the most stable droplet that is going to be dispensed. And we're going to use, to, uh, use conductive ink to print this pattern on a glass slide. So the system is following the software script that we use to define the pattern. And it's simply drawing out each uh, trace. So after it's completed, um, we essentially would have printed a circuit, or at least a, a circuit component. I'm Karen Chung, I'm an assistant professor at UBC. My group works in biomedical microdevices. The research projects in our biomems group are very interdisciplinary. We take aspects from cell biology, biochemistry, polymer chemistry, uh, microtechnology, electrical engineering, and combine them together to make products that will be used for biomedical applications. So we're always looking for people who are open-minded and are willing to learn aspects of these many different fields because the projects really, really demand it. Some of our projects are implantable microelectrodes for recording from the brain. Other projects include lab-on-a-chip systems. These are miniaturized devices that are used for characterizing the cells. So we have devices such as this one. We hope that these devices can provide automated ways to culture cells and characterize cells as opposed to systems in conventional labs today. So labs nowadays might have very large pieces of equipment on the bench top that can be used to measure properties of cells. For that kind of thing, you need millions of cells. For cancer cells and stem cells, there's only a, a small number of them. And we hope that by using small devices like this, we can keep track of these cells and do our studies in a more automated way. Hi, my name is Faisal Karim, and I'm a PhD candidate here at the Microsystems and Nanotechnology Group at UBC. And this here is the home of our high performance cluster. Come on, let's take a look. So this here is our cluster. It's got 32 nodes and 180 CPUs. Uh, I use it to simulate various nanoelectronics, but it's also used to uh, determine the behavior of uh, carbon nanotube sensors or to multi-physics simulations. Uh, the great thing of having a such a high-performance cluster is it allows us to determine fairly accurately the behavior of various nano devices without actually having to fabricate these devices. My name is John Madden. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering, one of the faculty members of MENA, and uh, my area of research is in the application of carbon-based materials. So on the printable transistors, what we're trying to do is make transistors 
using a regular printer or using a newspaper printing press. There are companies that are starting to develop printable electronics and applications, one of which is Plastic Logic. Uh, it's the first one, and they are able to make refreshable displays that have printable uh, backplanes so that you can essentially have a newspaper uh, that will automatically re refresh itself. Now in the environment is a, is a huge concern and has been for some time. People are finally agreed that we have to do something and one of the natural approaches is to use solar energy. Can we make an effective solar cell that takes advantage of nature's processes? The option that we're looking at is taking the photosynthetic uh, units out of plants, or actually in our case out of bacteria, there's a possibility of making it um, an effective alternative to uh, conventional uh, solar cells. Hello, uh, my name is Arash Takshi and uh, I'm doing uh, research on uh, biophotovoltaic uh, uh, cells. The cell is more look like a simple uh, battery. When we shine light on that, we can uh, store energy in that and um, it's kind of the, um, recharging the battery by uh, using light. I have a very simple uh, experimental setup which uh, the light um, has been produced by a, a, a source over there and uh, has been transferred to a fiber optic cable to the uh, box that I have put my um, cell inside of that. So um, the circle you see uh, at the center is the active part that actually the protein has been put uh, on the surface of the electrode and uh, like a battery we have an electrolyte which uh, helps to carry the charge. As one of the projects we are running here is uh, trying to build organic transistors with a specific characteristic. And what we do is uh, that we actually take a chemicals, which, um, which is a type of the polymer has been already made uh, um, and it's uh, available um, in the market. And we take a little bit of that and um, weighting the amount we need and uh, mix it with different solvents to make a solution which contains the polymer in it. The process needs to be done in a uh, glove box like this, which you can see that uh, uh, the user is isolated from the place that uh, the experiment is running. Um, and uh, the environment inside the box is filled with just nitrogen, um, which is quite uh, um, neutral uh, for the chemical we are using in here. This part of the glove box is dedicated to um, um, mixing uh, chemicals. The other side of the glove box is a metal evaporator. So those metals um, are uh, deposited on um, the sample we are testing by using a machine like this, which is an evaporator.